Hi everyone, this is Hillary with Wild Orange Emporium. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I try to inform you, teach you, share um, what I'm doing in my reselling um, business on multiple platforms. And this video is a what sold for November. Um, I'm also going to say a little highlight about why I might have picked up the item or if it's a commission item, that sort of thing. Um, trying to help you understand about bolos, be on the lookout, and, you know, some of what sells for me. Um, and that's it. If that's something you're interested in watching, stay tuned. Again, thanks for stopping by my channel. Today's video is mostly what sold for November, and then, you know, just some normal chatting about what's going on in life. And it was a great month. November felt like a month of listing, listing, listing. Um, if you've stopped by my channel before, I um, tend to watch Daily Refinement with Tech and Sports on YouTube while I'm working. I uh, just passively listen. It's a great way to learn and just working on being consistent. And um, some of you guys wonder like, how much time should I put into my reselling business? And it just really depends on what you're uh, available to do. So for November, I kind of tracked and roughly I do about 30 plus hours a week. I try to make my schedule Monday through Friday, 9 to 3. That includes all of it, shipping, listing, sourcing, and that's usually a, a general. Now, um, Saturdays, I try not to do too much, but if because I have a flexible schedule, I will have um, you know meetings or lunches with people, uh, typically from church or friends, and uh, have Saturday as a buffer in case I didn't you know, get some of those items or things done on my to-do list for work. Then, um, and then Sundays, I really try not to uh, do any um, eBay or any of the platform work, except for sometimes Sunday night. I will prep my shipping um, and get everything ready to ship out for Monday morning. Uh, I try to go work out with my friend, uh, Patty. Hi, Patty, uh, and work out in the morning. Uh, but that way I don't feel so stressed. Like I get it done Sunday night, it's ready to go when I walk out the door to go work out. So set systems in place that will allow you to be consistent. Uh, and then you don't have to feel like you're all over the place. I know it helps me mentally. Uh, I think the hardest thing about that is because I'm flexible, I can fill myself, my time up with fun things like going out to lunch. <laughs> um, so I just have to remember that I do own a business and I do have a job. Um, so hope you understand that. That was all bonus. Um, so for um, being consistent, I've worked on listing 10 items a day um, for probably about 100 days now. So last week I was up to 15 a day. Um, of listing, which is big for me. I felt like I was really in a rhythm and I was really focused on my business. Um, some of those items I do cross list and cross list means you have it on one platform. So eBay would be considered a platform, Poshmark, um, and I would cross list it to uh, Poshmark and sometimes Mercari. And, um, and I don't use a service or anything. I just do it myself. And if that's something you'd be interested in seeing a video on how that works, you know, when I'm on my, I usually do everything on my phone, but uh, there you have it. So here are some highlights of what sold in November and I'll put the pictures up uh, next to me on one of these sides and we'll go from there. So Macari was really slow. Like eh, I sold two things in the month of November. Um, and if you see in some of my, my past video, Macari had a real uptick when they announced that they were doing local delivery with Uber. I still have not had anything like that happen. Um, but I did sell this Minnie Mouse uh, tutu outfit. 
and it sold pretty quick, like a few days. I sold that for $14. Um, maybe got it for a dollar, but it's super cute. And I really, you know, one of the things about sourcing and what I source, I do look for bolos, be on the lookouts, but it can be relative because people will be like, a bolo is VCRs. I'm not buying and shipping a VCR. I have learned um, since I've started this, I do not enjoy testing electronics and I do not enjoy shipping heavy bulk items because customers don't want to pay over $20 for shipping. And even UPS, it, you know, it just gets a little expensive. So I've been able to narrow, I get excited about what's the next thing on the lookout. And you know, I have uh, fear of missing out, FOMO and all that kind of stuff. But I've learned for me, too big is not great. It, but you can do large items on Facebook Marketplace. Um, but still, I don't want to test. Um, I think, but there's someone out there that loves testing VCR. So I'll, you know, just leave those items for those people. Um, I also sell on Curtsy, which is a younger generation, like uh, uh, 20 year olds. Um, and I sold one item on there and their pair of uh, Levi's, uh, brand new with tags. Poshmark felt like it slowed down a lot this month too. I have realized I have only about 400 items on Poshmark. Um, and I think that's on the low end for some, for some people. So um, I've just really been focusing on getting everything on eBay and cross-listing, but not as heavily. So on Poshmark, I had 12 um, items sell, something that sold super quick. And um, I took an offer from, <laughs> this was that Lululemon's men's shirt, and I'll post the video up there. But that was, oh, I was such a dork and couldn't find the tag because Lululemon usually has a circular tag inside a pocket. So I have a men's shirt the tag is clearly right there and I'm looking all over for the tag. So anyways, I didn't even know Lululemon made men's shirts till just a few men, uh, months ago. So this shirt sold for $63 and my sister, it's a commission from my sister and she probably got it from the bins. Um, and so she paid maybe $2 at the most, she paid $2 for this. So that's a great profit. And so for my commission work, we split items 50-50 after, um, after, uh, after the fees are taken out. So just remember that. If, um, if that's something you're interested in me making a video on just specifically on how to do commission, um, just leave a, leave a comment. Uh, next was this um, NSYNC foldable organizer for $12. I love this buy. I have an auction site that I go to um, and I got these for five cents each. So if you want any, I've got 71 of them. Let me know. Say you saw my video and I'll make you a deal. But I have them listed both on eBay and Poshmark. So for the month of November, uh, eBay went gangbusters, which, you know, for Q4, uh, we were we would hope for, and it's going well for December so far too. I had over 70 items sell, and I'm going to share some of the highlights. Um, this sold within 24 hours. A new day uh, faux snakeskin boots. Again, this is from my auction site. I think for shoes, I usually bid three dollars or less on shoes, um, but they've had some Sorel. Um, maybe I can find a, a picture for you. Sorel shoes, boots, used. People will buy these to resell at $20. They have a bunch of new ones, but I'm not going over $20 on them just because it's a, it's a high cost output um, and not guaranteed. But, you know, we'll see if I get some. Um, next was this Lego Friends Advent Calendar. I sold it for $32. Just about anything Lego new in box is a good thing to pick up. So for Lego, I tend to do 50% of manufacturing cost if it's new in the box. So that means that if it's $100, I'll pay up to $50 because I know Lego will sell. If it doesn't sell right away, it'll sell eventually. Um, like those Sorel boots, they're, because it's clothing, um, 
new is great and they are great sellers, but still that's a lot of output when I've not sold those before. So I'm not as comfortable selling at buying it at half. Does that make sense? Even brand new. So if they were $150 and paid 75, yeah, that makes me a little more nervous. So I would bid, I bid lower on those, those sorts of items. I hope that makes sense. One of the things I did want to say for um, November, I ran a lot more sales. I ran a Black Friday sale um, and I put a lot of my items that I've had for a year on 45% uh, off. And why I do 45% off and not 50 is because if someone is interested in your item and your this is specifically for eBay, then um, I want to make an offer. So I minimum offer you can send someone is 5%. So if I send someone, if they're interested, the item's on sale for 45, I send them a 5% offer. That means that item is 50% off. Um, and for me, for those items that are over a year old, I want to move them before the end of the year to get my inventory. As we said, I should have a motto. I'm not a storage facility. Um, so let's move some of that. And I think that's what a lot of these sales were, is moving some of those. So I, most of my commission stuff I did not put on clearance like that. But just some of my bread and butter um, sort of items, you know, my daily items that sell, I put on that sale. I sold this Thayer Magic Catalog. This is from my father-in-law. Um, he had a bunch of magic books, so I took um, an offer for $34 on that. Oh, here's, a, here's something that I don't understand why eBay doesn't have it in their algorithm to figure out. I got some NyQuil, um, and I'll put the picture. Um, if I have it, I think I, I have it, but... Um, it went to Puerto Rico, which I thought would be okay, but um, because it's, you know, United States. Um, is it a call? Not a call. <laughs> so one of the things to be on the lookout for, and I'm surprised that eBay doesn't have this flagged before it sells. Uh, well, not before it sells, but once it's sold and see their shipping. Um, but I sold these NyQuil bottles to an address in Puerto Rico which I figured Puerto Rico is okay um, because it's, you know, part of the United States. That, um, but it made it to Kentucky and then they flagged it and I got refunded. I think the, the buyer got refunded, but it got confiscated and pitched, I'm assuming, um, because it can't go overseas. But you would think that would be something that they would catch before I could ship it out, you know? But anyways, um, which is a bummer. I think I've heard other people who've done YouTube videos talk about items like that, like um, getting flagged for something. Oh, maybe fur, and it just had fur, like faux fur or something in the in the title, and it was destroyed. So, oh, this was a fun story. I sold this um, uh, Bing Crosby White Christmas uh, album. What is it? Shellac, a '76, and it was a local pickup. So, um, I met the gentleman and he had his mother in the car and this was the only one of their, I think it was a Victrola, he said, he said in passing, that she needed was this white Christmas album for her whole set of Bing Crosby's. So that was really encouraging. And this is something my sister picked up at the bins. Um, I think we sold it for $21. So again, she probably got it for a couple or less. And she picked up a, old, but a whole bunch of vinyls. Um, next is, again, my sister, Chels. She's doing a great job shopping. Is these Gap vintage leather um, pants. We sold, we took an offer of $50 and they sold to an artist in New York City. Anytime there's someone in New York City, I usually, you know, look up their address. I'm a stalker, not really. Um, look up their address just to see who it could be. And this was um, an artist, which was really cool. I think that's fun. Um, next, oh, I'm super excited for this sale. It's a Calvin Klein Hound's Tooth Coat, size 2P. And um, the story behind this coat, uh, this coat is that my um, friend who I nannied for, she got it at a thrift store about 10 years ago. I think maybe she said she paid five or $10. 
and I sold it, drum roll, for $84. So that's a commission on that. So she made money, wore it for years, made some money. Um, so I did say, I was going to say, I was going to tell you why I picked some things up, but these are commissions. So Calvin Klein, uh, especially this sort of unique Calvin Klein, um, I would pick that up at the thrift store if it was $5 or less. A lot of times with, when you're deciding what you're going to pick up, it has to do with the cost if it's new. Um, and I do have my phone with me at all times, I must say. And I use the eBay app to kind of look up how things are selling, what they're selling for. It's a great tool. Um, but also, I enjoy picking up things I love. And sometimes they don't sell. Maybe I'll put a picture up. I have this terrible Bobby Brooks, which is the dollar store, shirt. Um, and I love this dumb thing, but it is too extra and no one's going to buy it. But I'll keep selling it. And if I need to, every once in a while, maybe I'll throw it on. It's not new, but it's really about, one, enjoying what you're doing. Um, so, I, of course, I enjoy shopping, but I need to learn to continue to enjoy listing. So, try not to buy more than what you can sell. Note to self. And if you buy items that you know and do the research that will sell, it's also okay to buy the ones that you think are cool. Because some there's there's more than... Okay, you're unique, but you know that there's other people that have similar tastes as you. Okay. So, anyways, moving right along. I sold these Wolford uh, tights, a, a set of two on auction. Uh, I put them on auction and someone made an offer and it was the same person who bought the last set. So thank you very much. Sold them for $40. Uh, Wolford is usually pretty high priced, but uh, like again, I'm not a storage facility. Get those bad boys out of here. Then uh, my last video, I talked about briar horses, and, and I've also talked about my daughter getting married, which is super exciting, and she is selling her briars to help pay for her wedding dress, and so I sold on auction this gorgeous briar, um, this is the star-studded Mustang, it went on auction for $122.50, or $122, agree read my handwriting, um, Next was this briar, um, it's called urethra, ure, it's called urethra, no, it's called ethereal, ethereal, right? Okay, ethereal, <laughs> wind, urethra and wind together. Can you tell that I have a bowel disease? Um, oh my gosh, everything's about the bathroom. So, <laughs> see if I can get through this with a straight face. Briar, ethereal, wind. Um, so it is a, you can't really tell in the picture, but it has a base, a brown base, and then it has this piece that looks like a uh, wind and then the horse, obviously, with its mane flowing. And that sold for either $57 or $51, according to my, um, to my notes. And you'll see it up there when I actually put it up. And one of the, uh, fun buys I found was this cool K-U-H-L jacket. This is definitely a be on the lookout for cool. Um, any of them, men, women's clothes, their hiking clothes. I've had, I've sold all the pieces um, that I, that I found. My sister has found some um, and she, we've sold those. She has a shirt right now, a short sleeve shirt, but it's winter. So I'm not too worried about that, but I sold this cool um, fleece, I don't know. I don't know if it's technically called teddy bear because it's not as poofy, but it's functional and it has a hood and it had um, some usage around the sleeves and I took pictures and I say when I feel like something is not pristine, I always put as is on my listing in the title so that it's very clear because a lot of people will just see the title, see one or two pictures and buy it and not look through it. So the as is for me is a clear stating that this is not um, not as perfect as you would hope. Um, but this, uh, sold for $60 on offer. And I'm pretty sure I either got it for $5.99 or $6.99. So that was a great flip for me. Okay. Next for the, um, yep. This is the end of the 
video. Thank you for lasting this long, people. So I think I sold another one, but I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> so it's another horse, which in editing, I'll put up the picture and you'll get to see what it is. So I'll put a little traction on there. Looks like a briar that sold for $60 on an offer. So there you Oh, it might be the Briar Fest um, 2011 Fairy Tales White Horse. I took an offer for $60 on. How's that? I don't know. Well, anyways. Um, also, I again, I appreciate you watching my videos. I will, uh, for the new year, I'm really going to try to focus on being more consistent. And because, um, you know, making videos is more time consuming than I ever thought it would be. And it's not bad. It's just that the editing, it takes a few hours. And I think, you know, I'm not making any money off of this. You have to have a thousand subscribers to make money on YouTube. And I have 388, I think. So for next year, my focus will be more consistent. Um, you know, I've been lately doing a video every two weeks. I'm going to try to get back to doing it every week. I'm also, oh, I forgot to bring it in here. Bill, my husband got me a, uh, a chest um, camera uh, harness kind of thing so that I can wear it. Uh, the GoPro when I go out and I'm just not used to doing it. So I made a commitment to myself. I know this is going to sound goofy, but I'm going to wear it around the house. And so I may have some videos that are, you know, like a day in the life kind of thing. But I feel like if I get more comfortable wearing that harness, that when I go into thrift stores, it won't be a weird thing for me. I'm not really good about videoing on my phone. I like to have my hands free. Um, so we're going to try that and see if I can desensitize my brain to having this on, um, and get some more videos out for you. And I appreciate you watching. If there are certain kinds of videos that you need to, um, have in your reselling business or what you enjoy more of, um, leave me a comment, um, and I will put it on my list and I will knock out some of those videos. I will have some thrifting videos coming up. I've gone to the thrift store a few times. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. We're in Hanukkah season right now. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. And I know that I might get one or two more out. We're going to go on vacation to the happiest place on the earth. Um, and I cannot wait and with the holidays coming up to have a little break. But I uh, wish you a Merry Christmas. Again, hit the like button and subscribe and share this video with your friends or on your social social media. I'd like to get it to a thousand subscribers um, in 2022. I think that's a lofty but excellent goal and hence why I need to be more consistent. So have a great day. Tschüss.